Alright babies, sometimes I feel like I just want to plop down on the table and open my Bible and start hunting and pecking for these verses and delivering them to you apart from this rapid fire style that I've got. The word is in you, <laughs> you know, it's not in a book. I don't know, I don't know how many of you think that, you know, you got to to get the word in you is in you <laughs> let the word let the word of God dwell richly in you bless you with that yeah we are uh, we are containers we are earthen vessels and the sentences the edicts and the scripts and the promises and the admonitions of the Lord are in you discipline yourself Discipline yourselves there with just sitting and drawing from that stream. Because there is a stream in you. There is a stream of the Word of God. There is a, a litany of sayings. The voice of the Lord. There is a river that makes very glad the heart of God. Yeah. So maybe one of these days I'll get back to retrieving some verses from hunting and pecking sessions and delivering them to you but I would prefer to see most people awaken to the realization that the word is in you and that when you actually open the Bible it's it's a confirmation of, of, of stuff that's already there instead of getting the cart before the horse at anywho got uh, something from Psalm 91 here because he has known my name I will deliver him because he has set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him I'll set him on high because he hath known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That was inscribed on my destiny scroll before 1991 when I first set about to actually memorizing Psalm 91. It was just such an excellent adventure. It was a, a journey of discovery. And here today we've got, because you have known my name, and then the benefits of knowing his name. You can know the word. You can hunt and pack your Bible verses. You can memorize passages. But do you know his name? So I'm, I'm, I'm honing in on that. I'm, I'm feeling into knowing the name of the Lord. The nature of the Lord. So I've got this place in, um, I think it's the end of the book of Matthew. I've always been intrigued at the end of the book of Matthew. And all four Gospels have this, like, sayonara from Jesus. It's like, I'm heading out and taking up into a cloud. And bless you all, breeze on everybody. But particularly in the book of Matthew, you know, in the chapter of verses eluding me. <laughs> but it's not coming from a chapter of verse. It's coming from my heart. Because I know this. I know him. I, I, I know his name. And he says, Lo, behold. Lo and behold. <laughs> I am with you always. Even unto the end of the age. In that verse, just absolutely settled on me as just just layers of revelations of who Jesus is I am Exodus chapter 3 verse 14 I know that one Moses asks the voice of the Lord at the burning bush being commissioned into Egypt who shall I tell Pharaoh that sent us 
since you are sending me, voice in the burning bush, back to Egypt, who shall I tell Pharaoh that sent us? I am. I am that I am, the self-existing one, the possessor of real being. I am. So, I mean, there's several places in the book, in the Gospel of John, where you can read there's, there's I am statements where Jesus is saying, I, I, I'm that guy. I was in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. I'm the one that commissioned Moses to go to Egypt. I am before Abraham was. I am, Jesus says in John chapter 8. There are, there are several, and they're, they're just popping out to me. That's his name. Who shall I say sent us? The name of the Lord is I am. The self-existent one. The possessor of real being. And in him you have real being. In him you have the wherewithal to say that as he is, as Jesus actually is, as there is a record, as there, as, as there is a historical account of his passage through this world as there is a religion founded in his name and we are Christians now we say as he is because we know this self-existent one we, we, what does it say of, uh, of those that encountered John and Peter that, that, that in, the, in the times when uh, the book of Acts was setting about and the apostles were out getting busy and, and, and they said we could tell that this James and John, there's something about them. They're simple, they're unlearned, but they've been with Jesus. That essence, that real being, it resided, it resonated from them. And that's part of the package of knowing his name. First John chapter 4, verse 17 is a particular scripture these days that that I and I'm sensing I'm sensing some of you is resisting it, but I'm sensing Holy Spirit actually trying to get it through to us to understand what liberty and bliss we can actually walk in, regardless of good things happening or bad things happening or evil reports or pandemics or any of that kind of stuff. As he is, so are we in this world. As Jesus verily is, as Jesus is the possessor of real being. So I am in this world. And Jesus was challenged by religious leaders. And this is what I'm sensing. There's a lot of resistance and people digging their heels in about his claims. By whose authority, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, by whose authority are you doing this? And he gets into this contention with these religious leaders and he makes this absolutely blasphemous statement. As Abraham, before Abraham was, I am. See the little play on grammar there? See, he, he must not have been too schooled or learned because he, he screwed up his grammar. He's, his verb tenses are completely out of whack. Before Abraham was, I am. Well, maybe maybe he was making a statement that wasn't containable in language because verb tenses don't apply to him and there's a transcendent place of real being where he sits and he answers the religious leaders about what authority he had to be about healing people on the Sabbath and doing good works and things of that nature. See, this is a place that we can come to in these crazy times, this transcendent place regardless of what courses the world is taking I am this is breathe breathe I'm, l listen to your breath listen 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 to this yod hey vav hey we the hebrew for i am yod hey vav hey scribes and the hebrew scribes could even say that they had to say the name hashem but it's as simple and blissful and as, as transcendent. I mean, your real being in this world surpasses all the occasions 
in the spin cycle that society's on these days. Come apart, babies. Step apart from the news reports. Step apart from the hand wringing and the compulsions and the tyranny. The hand wringing over the future. Take some breaths with me, seriously. Let's let's just take some breaths together. That's as simple as it gets. It's as easy as breathing. Walking with Jesus Christ is as easy as breathing. And that's what it is. It's not a hierarchical claim that, oh, I am all that now as he is. Mm -hmm, So am I, honey, in this world. (laughs) No. No, that's not the nature of God. That's the nature of this world. And we've got a hierarchical um, filter to perceive somebody coming along and claiming 1 John chapter 4 verse 17 and saying, yeah, I am. I am. So back to Matthew. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. There's a threefold punch in that statement right there. I've expounded on the first one. Yahweh, I am. I am with you always. Who is speaking? Dissect dissect that sentence. There's a speaker. There's an object. There's a verb tense. I am am with you. Emmanuel. God with us. This is this is the cell. Oh, come on. Oh, this is Christmas. And it's getting me. Mm, it's getting me right here. Oh, come on, come Emmanuel. Oh my gosh, this is hitting me. And ransom captive Israel. It dwells in lonely exile here Until the Son of God appears <laughs> Rejoice! 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 Amen! <laughs> oh, this is good. I am with you. Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 9 something I am with you Emmanuel God with us even unto the end of the age El Olam see there's, there's another name there there is Yahweh there is I am there is Emmanuel God with us and there is the one that is at the end of the age the everlasting God the everlasting Father the inha- the one that's gone ahead of us and inhabits every single one of our outcomes every single one of our diversions all of our wayfaring, the everlasting God who, who concludes all timelines into himself. He's gathered all things unto himself. So there is absolutely no conclusion. There is no outcome. There's no consequences you'll ever face in any of your succeeding or failing in that dualistic paradigm through your whole life. There's, there's, there's nothing that you will ever face in your winning and losing where you'll not get to the end of that and behold Jesus Christ is Lord because he is the everlasting one the everlasting God behold I am with you always even unto the end of the age I feel like I could go off on this but I'm almost where I'm supposed to be going (laughs) 
and it's been a wonderful trip. Thank you for tagging along with me on my little bit of sojourning here. Know the name. Know the name. <laughs>